What is going on today guys? This is Tony from Team Divine Pro here. Coming at you guys with a nether deck profile like I promised for Card Fight Vanguard. And here it comes. So we are doing today a Nova Grappler deck. I know this is a very first Nova Grappler deck we have ever done on the de on the channel. And hopefully this is good. This goes well and we can do more of, of this stuff. And yeah. Um let me just get something out of the way. I just want to check something. Yeah, okay, um, so, the deck it revolves around heavily, this, this deck, just like the, uh, the, this deck, like, if anything, is super cheap to build, because everything you can get in the G, uh, the booster set one, generation booster set one, apart from, like, four cards, which are commons, so, it's really, really cheap to make, and it's really good, so, uh, I don't even know why I'm showing you the the generations first. So we should have start off with our starter. Our starter here is this guy. He is not the other one. It is the one that he is a forerunner, and then he's like the uh, Gore the the Riot Horn person, the from the old time. But basically, when he's on Generation Break One, if he if the person in front of him stands, he stands also. So it's really powerful because of the fact that he stands. And then we are supposed to be playing for uh, Victor, but I only pulled one and that's extremely odd because you would think that I would pull more of that. But um, when it attack hits gen uh, on Generation Break 2, so when Generation Break 2 is active, the when the attack hit, okay, wait, let's focus, let it focus. Okay, when the attack hits, um, this unit gets plus 5,000 rear it's dead. Oh, and and then if it... So basically, if the attack hits, then you can stand a rear guard. Again, this card gets plus 5,000, but then you can also stand a rear guard. It gets plus 5,000, and it... I think that's it. I'm not sure. Oh, and then if you get, if there's a stride on top of that, then, um, it can, if the attack hits also, then your opponent ha then you can counter blast one and then stand another one of your rear guards and it gives also plus 5,000. So you can get technically two stands out of this bad boy. Um, not on the same turn though, cause you'd have to stride and then you'd also have to do the counter, the generation break too. So it doesn't work that way guys, but still, this is a, this is pretty much the heart and soul of the deck. As one of them. Um, yeah, sorry, it's been a while since I last played this deck, and I am just a little rusty. Uh, wait, let me just check to see if it hits. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, now I know why it's a lot better. I remember now. It's because this none of the effects declare that it has to actually hit the Vanguard, it just has to say when it attacks. So I could be like, attack, I can counter blast, and then it's something my other column stands. So it's really powerful in that sense because, you know, it's just amazing. Like this this deck is basically probably better than a lot more of the more expensive decks just from the fact that it's so underrated that people wouldn't see it coming. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm thinking about just sleeving them up in these because I don't know what else to sleeve them in. Like unless if I'm going to sleeve them in these, leave your comment down below because <coughs> I don't really know which one to do. Uh, next up to round off the grade threes, we have four more uh, grade threes. So we have the four of the um, what's his name, Muscle Shriek. His uh, abilities on Generation Break One, Counter Blast Two. When this unit attacks a Vanguard, you may pay the cost if you do choose two of your rearguards, stand them in that in those units gets plus two thousand until the end of turn. So you get to choose two if you have Generation Break One, which is really good because you'll see it later on in the grade two and grade one lineup why this is amazing. And then also there's ability of counter blast one, soul blast one. When this use placed on Vanguard Circle, you may pay the cost. And then you can counter blast. You can choose one of your grid one unless rear guards, and then choose one of your opponents. And then oh, so basic. Okay, so I I've never actually used the secondary effect, but I guess it's a good point that I noticed now. Counter blast one, soul blast one. Choose one of your grade one rear guards, and then choose one on your opponent's side. Retire the one on your opponent's side. Yeah, basically it. So I don't know why you'd have to target one of your own, unless if, for some reason, you had to, but I don't know. And moving on to grade twos, we run 11. So we run technically eight, guys, eight. So you got to be listening to the audio for this. Um, eight 
grade, I mean, 11 grade uh, 2. So we run 4 Starlight Hedgehog, and that's not in the shot. There we go. Yeah, it's 4 Starlight Hedgehog, and then... The ability is that if it's placed on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, you can declare... Uh, wait, let me just bring it in closer for you guys. When this card is placed on Vanguard or Rearguard Circle, you can place the ability the, the ability I'm going to state onto another Rearguard. It's that if it stands for an, an ability of another card, you get to draw one card. And that is just... And then on top of that, you get to ch like uh, pick one of your f damage and then unflip it. So it's like basically this deck unflips itself for free and it's so powerful like this is i i mentioned that this was the heart like this was the heart and soul but like really it's this and this together because you get to cycle through your entire deck and then on top of that you get to unflip damage so it's like basically this effect was free so it's amazing that's why you run four um then you run four of this good bad guy this good guy i don't, I don't know how to call them extreme battle Oh, no, wait, no. Extreme Battler Sazanda. So, this is the beat stick of the deck. So, he is the beater. So, at Generation Break 1, if the opponent, if he is stood for any apparent reason, he gains an extra 5,000. Sounds legit, you know. And then, to round off, we would technically be running three of, but I only, as I've said before, I only pulled a certain amount of number of... Cool Hank. Cool Hank is cool to begin with, but its ability is when it generation brick one, if he attacks the Vanguard when he is boosted, you can counter blast one and then and then choose one of your rear guards and it stands and then it gains plus five thousand for the turn. So you could attack with say him and then as long as he's boosted you could stand another column and if you have that ability active you can draw a card and counter it's like basically the counter blast was free like as long as you have this card like your deck is beautiful like your deck is perfect uh and speaking of which you could technically play this card but i have no clue what it does and i haven't spent the time to look into it but i'm assuming that it's okay with the combo but i this deck is good like i i know that this deck is good Moving on to grade ones, we run fourteen. We run four extreme battler. There's a lot of extreme battlers. Extreme battler Arashid. So okay. So I actually know what this card does now. So it is the um, it it's the one that pays for stride. So you have this in the deck just to pay for stride, but it's also because you can discard a grade 3 from your hand, reveal a grade 3, um, when it's placed on rearguard, obviously. And then you can search for a victor in its card name, which is basically your only target is here for now, which is pretty cool, and you still get a lot of advantage from that. Uh, I would... That is an... That's one of the cards. And then you would be technically playing four of the... Counter Blast 1, but like in all reality, you can technically run four of the just normal perfect guards because the deck doesn't actually need it as long as you have the Starlight Hedgehog on the field. So that would be eight grade threes, and then to round off, you would technically be running um, uh, three Claydol Mechanics and three Scramming and Dancing Announcer Shout because you want to cycle through the deck a lot more, a lot faster because the deck doesn't have its own like a lot of draw triggers and the deck doesn't have a means of applying a lot of pressure, so you want to get through the, your key combo cards. Like, this is basically a very combo S deck, so you want to get to this card, and you want to get to this card as soon as possible. And then, Claydol Mechanic's just there for more uncounter blasting, if need be. But, like, in all reality, let's be truthful here, guys. You probably don't. And the only reason, if you guys are wondering, I, use it, I used proxies was because I don't have them in Japanese, which annoys me, because I want to keep the entire deck in Japanese. And now the main reason why I can say that the deck is so easy to build from just the booster is because all the triggers are, the good triggers that you really need for the deck are in the booster also. So you run four heals, four crit, four stand. I don't even really know what the effect of the stand is, but it does, it's very irrelevant, I think. Oh, actually it's generation break one. 
Vanguard, if you have a Vanguard, and then if it, uh, you can stand something, basically. It's, it's actually quite relevant now that I look at it. And um, a draw trigger, and four draw triggers. So it rainbow triggers, but it actually works out really well, considering the deck. And the fact that you stand, it doesn't activate any of the effects, but actually, it states due to an effect of a card. I don't know if triggers are effects. That... I am not exactly sure on. If you guys know the answer to that, comment down below and let me know because I am quite curious because I have never, like when I get a stand trigger, I don't activate the effects of like Stay Starlight Hedgehog or like Cool Hank because of the fact that, not Cool Hank, but just basically him, but, or him, but I could be technically wrong and I could be, the deck could be a lot better. It's possible. But apart from that, that's all I know. And moving on to the extra deck. Oh, I'm sorry. This isn't Yu-Gi-Oh. This is the stride units. We run... Four of the rare ones. So you could technically put this to two and then play two uh, Atmos if you want, but I don't think that you need to run Atmos. You can just run this card uh, at four of because it helps facilitate the standing abilities. And it's uh, stride this card in your Vanguard from face down. When this unit attacks, hits a Vanguard, choose a one card from your rearguard, stand it, and it gets plus 5,000. So basically, this card does have to hit, but it does apply a lot of pressure to your opponent, forcing them to guard because they really don't want you to stand because then you just... You know what happens if you stand? You go like stand, 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 hit, 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 and then stand, stand, stand again. So basically, you really don't want this card to stand. You don't want this card to hit. So your opponent's going to put a lot of effort into guarding this because it's going to be at like 26 base without a boost. And then finally we run uh, four, we would be technically running four, uh, Vict Plasma because he's the standard, the Vanguard standard because everything else stands rear guards, but this is the Vanguard one and he's just really powerful and you just want to have a card that gives you triple drive tech twice in the game. Because I hear that card advantage, hand advantage is good. And yeah. So apart from that, guys, um, not much else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I do apologize for not knowing exactly all the effects of the cards. But hopefully it was an entertaining for you guys to see a new type of deck. And I'm pretty sure not a lot of people would have deck profiled this because, you know, it's Nova Grapplers and like kind of the X is kind of in the same set. Unless if you're playing in English, I'm not exactly sure what's in the English side. But um, yeah, so this is a fun deck. It's really good. And as you can see, like there's a lot of combos you can do. Like, I don't know if maybe I could figure out a combo really quickly. Um, let's see if I can start a combo with just like, without even having to use anything. So you can just do um, a basic combo would be even like, this is how good the deck is. As long as you have this card, and then you have this card, as long as you have like something like this, then you can do, as long as this card attacks, you can counterblast, and then, well, actually you'd have to, you'd want this card to attack first, and then you'd go counterblast, and then you attack this, counterblast, it stands, uh, yeah, uh, no, sure, uh, whoa, I, mis I misplayed that entirely, okay, so you want to attack this first, that's okay, like, you could do this if you want. You can attack like this, attack like this, stand, attack, stand, attack, stand, attack. Like this. This is just ridiculous, guys. Like basically, you can you can keep on doing that. Like that's what the cycle is. And uh, I know I didn't show it off perfectly, but that's basically what it is. I don't know how else to explain it. And with that, I guess I'm just mumbling off right now. So this has been Tony from Team Divine Pro, guys. Uh, comment, rate, like, and subscribe. If you want to see more Vanguard and Waste content, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye!